Hello again, and welcome back to Where You Go Speaks TV. Today we are at Plug Pond Powwow in Haverville, Massachusetts. And today on the show we have Ricky Samatora. Welcome, Ricky. Hello, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here with White Eagle Speaks. So today, uh, uh, Ricky, can you tell us who you are and um, uh, what you do? My name is Ricky Samaritana. I'm a tribal member of the Pocasset Wampanoag, the Poconoke Nation in Fall River, Massachusetts. I am an energy healer. I do alternative healing. Um, the healing work I do is organ specific. Heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, fibromyalgia, Lyme disease. I work on people with emotional, mental, and physical issues to promote healing. Uh, uh, what I was told is that my family were Native American healers several hundred years ago. But what got me into doing healing work is I was suffering from Agent Orange from the Vietnam War. So that's what led me to the healers who started working on me to get me to where I am right now where I am a healer who is certified in intuitive discernment. So, and um, what you do, and, you know, you heal people, um, which is great. Awesome. I mean, it's uh, that's what we need. I mean, uh, um, so, um, and who, like, um, have you helped across the nation? Do, do you go across the nation to other people? I've driven as far as Connecticut. I worked on a, a veteran who had sclerosis of the liver. And with my tuning in, I told him it would take me six months to get him at an even healthy level before we'd be able to see some difference if he did what I told him to do. And um, we started off doing some amazing things. Unfortunately, when he went to visit a friend, he found his friend dead at home, which caused him to start drinking again. So um, he's back on track right now, and um, hopefully the healing work that we were doing uh, will continue to help him uh, stay healthy. And I know in Native American culture, indigenous people, um, who we are, um, it's very important, you know, to have somebody that, you know, helps other people, just like you do, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, the traditional ways of going to the hospital or going to a doctor, you know, and a lot of our people yes. don't like doing that, yes. you know. And uh, with what you're doing, you know, um, um, in your own way, you know, um, which is good. Um, I would like to, to ask, like, how you mentioned about ancient orange, okay, and um, um, and it just affects you every day. Yes, it does. You know? Yes. Um, and uh, and there's a lot of people out there, you know, um, that are affected by that. Okay. So. Um, um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is how, you know, with 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 that, um, did you go to college, did you go to university to learn this, or how? No, I didn't. When I started working myself, I went to see a lady who was a gifted intuitive. She's able to see inside a person's body like an x-ray, see what the problem is and come up with a solution. And at the time I was a police officer, I was working for a federal agency, I was a top sergeant. And the fellows would see me daily trying to scratch, but I was wearing my bulletproof vest and I couldn't scratch and I was sweating uncontrollably. And I would rush home and soak in oatmeal baths and sea salt baths to try to remove um, um, the uh, discomfort that I was having. Um, I had fluids coming out of my body that were yellow in color. And um, it was it was very enduring. If I hadn't been strong mentally, I would have probably given up and done something else, but I stuck with the healing process. Um, I also would go to monthly sweat lodges, which also helped purge 
the organs and help continue to pull uh, toxins out of the body. It was very enduring because I was covered with sores that were the size of a, a silver dollar. I had sores from my head all the way down to the body. Um, it led me to make some major dietary changes. No more meats with growth hormones and steroids. Uh, um, the various nutritional and medicinal supplements that I had to uh, uh, change to uh, to keep myself strong and healthy. Um, um, a, n a number of things, but I but I've stuck with the process, which has helped me clear my body. Now, for those who don't know what Agent Orange is, during the Vietnam War, the enemy hid in a very thick jungle. The United States government used specific planes to spray chemicals to defoliate the jungle. It got in the water, it got in the food that we ate. Um, my friends were born with um, uh, babies who were um, uh, deformed. Um, it's It caused major issues with a lot of the military, including myself. Um, I have difficulty driving because of that. I'll have good days and bad days, but I have to continue to work on myself. And who was also a Vietnam veteran, the book was titled Hidden Enemy. It's about what he went through during the Vietnam War and the chemical exposure that he was exposed to and how his son was born and couldn't hear. So uh, this is my friend Oscar Munoz from, uh, from California. Um, it was just incredible um, the things that a lot of us went through. Um, the blessing is I've been able to work on myself and um, continue to keep myself strong and healthy. You were talking about uh, sweat lodges. Oh, yeah. Yes, I found that the combination of me working on myself with alternative healing and the sweat lodges helps continue to clear the body of the toxins that have been plaguing me for so long. And um, I feel if not for the alternative healing and sweat lodges, monthly sweat lodges, um, I would have succumbed. All my friends are all are all dying. Um, and, and now I realize that um, because of the illness that we all went through, uh, a lot of the fellows, they died younger than they should have died. Their children were born deformed, uh, limbs missing, um, um, uh, fingers, all types of things because the chemicals were sprayed and, and, uh, and we ate and drank from the same uh, source where the chemicals were being sprayed. And, um, and, but today you're at Tlokong Powwow, which is good. I mean, and w your roots on the Native American side, or indigenous side. We were told as kids that my father was Seminole. But years later I found out that he came from a location that was Seminole County. My father at one time lived in Windsor, Ontario. And the way he got off the reservation is he stole one of his father's cows and went to Detroit. They sent the older brother after him. And when the older brother got to Detroit, he saw all the bright lights, neither one of them went back. So he put my father through music school. My father was an A musician who played with people like Count Basie, Duke Ellington, and he played the trumpet. And my mother explained to me when they first got married, back in the 40s, they had enough money for a house and two cars. But the musicians would say to my father, why go home when you can hang with us and drink some liquor? So that's what he started doing. And he'd sell my mother's baby grand piano, and then there was no food, the different things that happened, um, the abuse uh, that my mother went through. Um, and my father died young. He died from lung cancer um, at the age of 69. Um, and um, it's sad because I've had to learn things from my older cousins because I didn't have a father at home. So I had one good role model back in the early 60s. Um, at one time I was a world-ranked boxer. I uh, fought for 
legendary trainer manager Angelo Dundee who managed Muhammad Ali and when I came back from Vietnam I was sent to South Florida to continue boxing and fight for Angelo that helped me get myself physically and mentally back in shape because I wouldn't have been able to uh, make it otherwise um, and then I started having in 1973 uh, kidney stones not knowing that it was the Agent Orange exposure because I didn't think about that. And then years later when certain things were happening, uh, tumors in the body, things like that, um, we find out that it's from Agent Orange exposure. And um, last year, I received 70% disability from the VA due to Agent Orange. And all the things that go along with it. So um, um, the blessing is that they acknowledged through my blood tests and things like that um, the illness that I was experiencing. Um, I pass kidney stones monthly. Um, I work on myself all the time to keep myself emotionally and mentally sound. You know, the, the blessing is I have these healing tools and I have the ability to go to the sweat lodge. That's, the, that's a, a tremendous blessing. So, um, so I'm very fortunate that I can use these alternative ways of healing that, that have a very subtle energy approach in the body instead of me using pharmaceuticals which down the road do all we have to increase the dosage and it um, and the problem never gets resolved you know, so okay good um so you're dancing okay and you're a guy that you you have um what does that mean to you well this was special regalia that i got from one of the elders um whose favorite location was where we are right now plug pond um, the elder whose name was Billy Love, he was known as Little Iron Horse and um, he was the cousin of the supreme medicine man for the Wampanoag, the late Slow Turtle, John Peters who used to be and was the first commissioner of Indian Affairs in Massachusetts. So Billy Love made my regalia. He started off by getting me towels, moccasins. He was a wonderful vendor. He made my my leggings. He stitched them and then took them to the tailor to have them stitched. They'll, they'll never come apart unless it just rots. Mm -hmm. And um, the last thing I got was was the uh, the war shirt that I'm wearing now. That's that's getting a little old. But today I purchased seven new skins to have new regalia made by my uh, by my cousin. Oh, nice, nice, very nice. So you know it's. Uh, um, and you used your talk that you were Seminole. My, I, we were told that our father was Seminole, but when we went back and we got papers from my father's mother's side of the family, we found out that she was Cherokee. Um, my father's mother and all the women in the family were six foot, six foot two, with long hair that went down to the waist. They wore silver jewelry, so when they went places people could look and see their heritage was, was Native American. When my father was having his um, different issues uh, with alcoholism, my mother would always uh, mention his tribe and say, yeah, that's your, that's your father's uh, side of the family that's acting up. So um, um, I would have liked to have learned things from him, but he succumbed uh, when I was a young guy and I didn't learn these things. Years later, my cousins got me into the circle um, and talked to me and, and they didn't yell at me but if I didn't show up Ricky you should have been there Ricky you should have been here so I would drive and show up and, and I was welcomed by so many of the elders because they had been hoping I would show up so um, um, the, the blessing is I am so connected in the circle where I I talk about the healing as much as I do the Native American events and, uh, and the family members, um, which is um, from from the work that I've done in the past, uh, police work and being a boxer, um, I don't mention that much uh, anymore. I talk more about healing in powwows okay. and the sweat lodge. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's good. And I do know that, um, I do know that um, um, Red Fox, you know, uh, I know I, we, the birthday gift they gave me was Red Fox, you know, that was in the... I met Red Fox September the 2nd, 1967, 
Basin Street West, San Francisco. And every three months when he would be in town, I would be there to see his act. And um, then he was overseas with Bob Hope. I didn't get a chance to see the show, but I saw him go by on the runway uh, under escort. Um, uh, and then years later, when I was in Florida and I was continuing to box, former heavyweight champion of the world, Jimmy Ellis, who I lived with nine months out of the year, came to town. I had bought four tickets knowing that Red Fox was coming to town that evening and went to see Red Fox. And Jimmy and I were sitting right up in front and we could see Red Fox was going backstage with his old partner, Slappy White. And I could hear Red Fox said, hey, there's Jimmy Ellis. Slappy White said, it's not Jimmy Ellis. Red Fox said, that's Jimmy Ellis. Slappy White said, it's not Jimmy Ellis. And Red Fox yelled out, hey, Jimmy. And Jimmy yelled out, hey, Red. So I told you that was Jimmy Ellis. So it was, it was so funny being there and seeing the performance. Um, and um, uh, a friend of mine uh, who was a world uh, uh, champion boxer years ago was in the studio the day Red Fox died. Red Fox was joking, oh, this is the big one. He was cutting up and laughing and joking. When they fell over, uh, one of the stars, Della Reese, said, oh, Red, come on, stop, stop playing. But he had, but he had died. You know? And they thought he was playing because he was always cutting up, dude, that's the, the big one that's coming. So that's how he passed away, uh, uh, doing filming for another show. You know? oh, Red Fox, he was a funny guy. Um, he was funny. Um, and we love the CD. Thank you for the CD. Um, yeah. <laughs> it'll help you on your trips. Um, it'll help you laugh. Um, one thing about Red Fox that a lot of people don't know is if he had a friend that was in trouble, he didn't lend them the money. He gave it to them. You know? And then when Red Fox was having um, tax issues, one of the great uh, singers, Frank Sinatra, got a group of people to come to uh, see Red Fox and do things to try and, and help out. Um, so... Some of the stars that uh, that we knew in the past, um, uh, Frank Sinatra, D. Martin, those stars were were great. They they helped their friends, and um, we don't have a lot of these type of things now. We don't have people who will pitch in and give someone uh, a helping hand. I did today healing work on a lot of people here at the powwow at no charge. And I had people that bought me herbal remedies. Uh, they're herbalists. I did work on a uh, lady in a wheelchair. I did a lady that uh, did work on a lady who shared some very personal um, health issues. And I was I was happy to be able to do a few things on some people who were sick today. Um, and at and at no cost, I was I was happy because it, it keeps me sharp working on people who have different issues that I may not have worked on in a while. Good. And that's, you know, I mean, we talk about, you know, with, with uh, unity, you know, bringing, bringing people together, you know, to get things done. Yes. Okay. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot of divisions going on, you know, around the country. Um, and, um, you know, bringing the East Coast, you know, to the West Coast, the West Coast to the East Coast, you know, which needs to be done more. You know, what are your thoughts on unity and and you know, um, 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 on unity. We're all one, regardless of whether we are Native American, African American, European. We we all we when, in the words of a, an old, friend that I met during the Vietnam War, an Asian fellow, when I had difficulty sometimes, he explained to the people, if you cut his skin, he bleeds just like we do. You know, um, he's got, you know, his eye, you know, so he, so he made people understand that we, that we're all, we're all one. We, we can work together. I worked under some terrible conditions during the Vietnam War. There were some fellows who were not nice. Some, some American soldiers were not made nice. Some Asian soldiers were not nice. But when they left to come back to the States, there were people who said things to me that were... They, they thanked me. And case in point, there was one soldier who was leaving to come back to the States. He never spoke to me um, much at all overseas. But when he was leaving to come back to the States, he, he sought me out. And in his words, 
Ricky, you were the nicest colored fellow I ever met. And I can only say thank you, because I understood what he what he meant, because we were around so many hell raises of all races when I was overseas. Um, I had friends of mine that were in knife fights continuously. You know, uh, they're deceased now from cirrhosis of the liver, different issues from drinking and chemical exposure. But I made a difference when I was overseas. The toughest thing is being fair. And you don't have to like somebody, but the toughest thing is being fair. And um, I had some, some great friends um, overseas um, that bestowed such wisdom upon me at the time. Uh, because of the Vietnam War, I speak Laotian and Thai. Um, I don't go in the restaurants and speak as much as I did uh, um, because I have difficulty with some of the ingredients and some of the foods. But I, I'll go or I'll talk and say hello to people just to keep my, my thoughts flowing of the language. Um, so um, uh, my family were linguists. Um, my late uncle was a college professor. He was a second lieutenant during the Second World War. They had him in the kitchen washing dishes because he was a person of color. He overheard the German prisoners planning an escape. He spoke several languages, including German. And they thwarted the, the uh, escape because of his language. So it caught the attention of the commanding officer. Next thing he realized, he's in a different position. But um, what I found is that some people do not use the expertise of another person for, for hateful reasons. Now, as a police officer, my old boss, who recently retired, knew that my specialty was detection. And he wrote one year in my evaluation after something happened, this sergeant has the uncanny ability to be able to detect problems before they happen. So when various high-profile government people would come to town, they'd say to my boss, I want that sergeant to escort me. Um, I've... Um, the late um, Mayor Thomas Menino, when he came into our site, hi Rick, He'd converse and talk with me. Uh, Governor Romney, when he came into our site, Hi, Sergeant, how are you? Um, when Bush was governor of Texas, before he became president, I picked him up along with his escort. Um, and um, so I was always requested. But my last big assignment was the former Fed chairman, Alan Greenspan. Um, that, was, um, that was an interesting assignment to um, stay with the Fed chairman who um, makes the monetary policies. So um, so I was requested because of my expertise. It was stressful. My boss chewed me out every day because I was in charge of 24 officers. And after he chewed me out, he'd say, Ricky, you ready for lunch? And everybody would look. Well, I'm not gonna say I can't have lunch with the boss. I'd go and have lunch, you know. And, yeah. and then he'd say, Ricky, why didn't you tell me about this or that? You know, but um, we, we had a real good rapport. And, um, I, I retired 10 years ago. I do miss the excitement, but now with the healing work, um, I'm doing something that's uh, that's more positive. Nice. Wow. You have one interesting life, Ricky. I mean, that's uh, there's a lot. I mean, um, but uh, what's, do you have a website where people yes. can find you? Yes, I have a website. My website, it's all one word. It's Medicine Wheel Matrix. That's M-E-D-E-C-I-N-E, -E, wheel, W-H-E-E-L, matrix, M-A-T-R-I-X, dot com. That's my website. You'll see um, I have pictures posted of my, my skin when I was sick and how I looked afterwards. I have a few um, pictures posted of some of the healing patterns that I use uh, when I do the healing work on, on different people. And um, I'm hoping to do some upgrading on the site uh, sometime soon. Good. Uh, so there you go. You can find Ricky on his website, his very own website. It's cool. Um, and uh, again, it's, it's an honor to have Ricky Cinematore here. And he's also assistant to Way to Go Speaks TV as well. Um, and, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, he's been helping Way to Go Speaks a lot. Um, you know, and uh, how do you feel about that? It's great because I can use my eyes in ears yeah. when uh, yourself and Nancy are busy. Yeah. 
so I can always um, look over things and see things and uh, and give you a call or send you a, a text message or an email uh, when I see something that um, um, I don't think uh, would be something that White Eagle Speaks would like on the site. So uh, so I can keep my eyes open for White Eagle Speaks. Good. And uh, so, I mean, Ricky does a fantastic job, too. I mean, he's, you know, and, um, but yeah, it's, uh, again, it's an honor and pleasure to have you on White Eagle Speaks TV, Ricky. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. So, again, uh, plug pawn powwow, and uh, uh, see you next time on White Eagle Speaks TV.